Asus Dynamic OC Switcher is a notable feature on Asus AMD motherboards. It was first introduced on the Crosshair 8 Dark Hero motherboard, and I first showed it in Scatterbencher number 15. On AMD platforms, Dynamic OC Switcher allows at runtime switching between OC and PBO modes to maximize the overclocking for single core and all core workloads. Cache Dynamic OC Switcher is similar in that it enables at runtime switching at a specific trigger point. However, as the name already implies, Cache Dynamic OC Switcher isn't about optimizing the CPU frequency, it's about optimizing the ring frequency. Here's how it works. You define two so-called gears, high and low gear, and a trigger switching point. The trigger is the CPU current. Anything above the set threshold triggers low gear, and everything below the threshold activates high gear. Practically, low gear represents an all-core load, while high gear represents a light or few threaded workload. In high gear, you can define three parameters, the ring ratio, the ring voltage, and the number of threads to go to sleep. In low gear, you define two parameters, the ring ratio and the ring voltage. The motherboard will force several CPU threads to sleep when the high gear is activated. The threads are disabled in priority with the hyper threads first, then the E cores and then the P cores. Suppose you're using a Core i9-13900K and want only real P cores to be used in high gear mode. In that case, you'd set the number of threads to sleep to 24, as this will include the A P core hyper threads and the 16 E cores. The main reason why this feature exists is because the ring can operate at a higher frequency when only P cores are active in comparison to when both P cores and E cores are active. However, in this guide, we use it for a different reason. Attentive viewers will have noticed something strange with the Prime 95 results of OC Strategy 1 and 3. While the frequency increased in the non-AVX workload from 5.5 GHz to 5.75 GHz, the frequency in the AVX-enabled workload actually decreased from 5,291 MHz to 5,162 MHz. What happened? Long story short, VF curves happened. As I explained before, the VCCIA voltage rail drives the voltage for the CPU P cores, E cores, and ring, and the voltage requested by the CPU to the voltage controller is the highest among all associated VF curves. The ring frequency drops to 4.5 GHz in an all-core workload on this system. When we look at the ring VF curve, we see that the voltage associated with 45X is 1.14 volt. When we look at the default P-Core VF curve, we see that the voltage for 51X and 52X are 1.15 and 1.17 volt. So in an all-core workload with a CPU frequency of 5.2 GHz and a ring frequency of 4.5 GHz, the VCCIA voltage is determined by the P-Cores, so 1.17 volt. However, after the undervolting from OC strategy number 3, we find that the voltage for 51X and 52X are now 1.05 and 1.06 volt. So in the same situation, the VCCIA voltage is now determined by the ring, 1.14 volt. So effectively, the voltage provided to the P cores is higher than needed for that frequency. So pushes the CPU temperature over TJ Maxx. As a response, the CPU will reduce the P-Core frequency to stay below TJ Maxx. Ordinarily, the only option here would be to prevent the ring from boosting beyond 43X or 44X in the BIOS, and that's totally possible with the BIOS options that are available. However, with Cache DOS, we can have the best of both worlds. 5 GHz ring in most workloads and lower or less than 4.5 GHz in the extreme workloads. As you'll see in the Prime95 results, that helps improve the AVX-enabled P-Core frequency from 5,162 MHz to 5,434 MHz.